Okay, so why are my veins so visible is the title of this presentation. First, a little bit about me. I'm Dr. Jacob White, Medical Director of USC Vein Clinics and formerly at other institutions such as Drexel University, Georgetown University, and the National Institutes of Health. I'm a vascular and interventional radiologist, which makes me um, very prepared and able to talk about vein disease. And I've now been the medical director at USA Vein Clinics for a couple of years. So why are my veins visible? What's going on with my veins? Some misconceptions about vein disease, symptoms, what to look out for, how we can treat it, and then at the end, I'll answer some questions and let you know how to connect with us if you'd like more information. So number one, if you or a patient of yours has vein disease, you are not alone. It is very, very common. It's estimated 20 to 25 million Americans at least have some varicose veins. So why is it so common? First, let's talk a little bit about how the veins work. And we're going to be focusing just on veins in your legs, OK? Here's a picture of a vein in your leg. On the left is when your muscles are relaxed and the blood is more just sitting there. And then on the right, as we start to walk, the calf muscles in our legs squeeze the veins and pump the blood up back towards our heart. Our veins naturally are relatively weak. They cannot pump the blood by themselves. So they're reliant on the muscles in our legs to help move the blood back to our heart. That's one of the reasons that it's very important to stay active and be walking around. That promotes good vein health in your legs. You can see in these pictures also, there are little valves in the veins. These little valves prevent blood from pooling in our feet too much. They prevent backwards flowing blood or reflux. Without these valves, we would stand up, gravity would pull the blood all down into our feet and the blood would stay down there. With these valves, it helps move the blood up back towards our heart. So that's a normal vein. Over time though, the veins can become diseased and particularly these valves can become diseased. So in this picture on the left, there's a normal vein with the valve open that allows blood to be flowing. When the valve closes, that middle image that prevents backwards flowing blood towards our feet and promotes blood to continue up our legs towards our heart. Over time, these valves can become damaged and they can leak. They don't close all the way. When that happens, blood is continually leaking through the valve down towards our feet. And instead of the blood naturally going back up towards our heart, it stays down towards our feet, and those veins get bigger and bigger and more dilated. So this is the mechanism behind varicose veins. There's too much pressure and too much blood in the vein because these valves are broken, and the blood flow is not heading up towards the heart. These veins get dark and they bulge out, particularly if they're close to the skin. And so that creates two issues. Number one is a cosmetic issue, all these bulging veins. Some are small, some are bigger, but a lot of patients don't like these veins bulging out. Number two, it presents a more serious medical problem. When the blood isn't flowing nicely, it can lead to lots of other problems. Number one, swelling. Number two, symptoms, which we'll get to in a second. Number three, blood clots. And number four, skin breakdown or ulcers, which is the worst complication of vein disease. That's what we're trying to uh, avoid at all costs. So if you think you might have vein disease, you're starting to have some symptoms in your legs, or you start noticing some veins, here's what you should be looking out for. Number one, swelling. That one's obvious. Has the blood is sitting down by our feet and down by our ankles, and then the blood isn't flowing, it stays down there and it creates swelling. Number two, cramping. Cramping is a very common symptom. As the blood just sits there in the veins and it's not moving, it causes a lot of cramping, typically in the thigh or the calf. Number three, visible, visible veins. It can be small spider veins, larger varicose veins, Either way, you can start noticing more veins popping up. Fatigue or heaviness, this tends to happen throughout the day because again, as we walk around, gravity pulls all the blood down towards our feet. And by the end of the day, there's too much blood in your legs, down by your ankles, and you can feel very heavy. Lastly, restlessness or crawling sensation. Again, very typical, we hear that a lot, 
as the blood is just sitting in the veins, it creates those sensations. So those are some of the symptoms that bring our patients into the office. When we look at the legs, we can see and kind of grade out how bad the vein disease is. And there's this grading system. It's from zero to six. Zero would be no vein problems at all. What we call C1 is small veins trying to show. C2 is the bigger veins. And that's the sign of the venous insufficiency and hypertension or too much pressure within the veins. That's noticing bulging veins. Next, as the veins get worse, we go to C3, which is swelling or edema. And that's the first time that there's more susceptibility to other issues, such as infection. The next step, C4, is skin changes. The skin loses its color, it turns dark, it turns thin, shiny, and more delicate. And then C5 and C6 are reserved for the most severe type of vein disease, which is ulceration or when the skin breaks down. And you can visibly see the layers underneath the skin. And because the, the blood is not flowing through the veins, it's very hard to heal these wounds. And so these become very chronic and ultimately can lead to an amputation if not treated properly. So this is kind of the spectrum or the progression of vein disease in the legs. We like to treat it obviously earlier before it gets too bad. So now that we've identified vein disease, we're in the office, we have the patient there, what is it that we can do for the veins? Okay, so there's two things that we can do. The first that we always start with is conservative treatment. It's easier to do and it helps for more mild disease. And the goal is, remember, we're trying to get good blood flow. We want the blood flowing from the feet back up towards the heart. And if these veins can't do it by themselves, the veins are weak, the valves are broken, we have to help support those veins. So here are the things that we can do. Number one, compression socks. They're just tight socks, that's all they are, but they're tight enough to help support these veins. And when we prescribe for compression socks, they're number one, very tight. So they are a little uncomfortable, admittedly. And number two, they're special in that it's what's called graded compression. So it's tighter down by the ankle and a little looser up top by the knee or the thigh to help bring the blood back up towards the heart. That's number one, compression socks. And as I'm sure you can guess, you really want to be uh, wearing them during the day when you're sitting and standing. At night when you lie down, it's not as big of an issue for the blood to flow because it's not fighting gravity and you don't have to wear the socks at night. Number two, you have to walk around and exercise. That stimulates the calf pump mechanism to help pump the blood through the veins and drive the blood back up to the heart. And we see this a lot in our offices. A lot of patients have the same professions, people who are on their feet a lot, teachers, hairdressers, things like that, where you're on your feet, there's no break, and the veins are constantly fighting gravity. And eventually, over many years, it can be a losing battle. Okay, so compression socks, walking around, elevating your feet. So instead of just sitting, it's best to elevate your feet. Um, and then lastly, there are what's called pneumatic compression devices, and those plug into the wall and they physically stimulate the veins and pump the blood for you. It's a garment that can be paid for by your insurance, and you would have it in your home. You put it on, hit a button, and it pumps the blood up for you. So these are all what's called conservative treatment methods for CVI, chronic venous insufficiency, to help support the veins. This is what we do when we first meet the patient, and if the vein disease is only mild. Once it progresses, then we have to move on to what's called procedural management. We do procedures to treat the veins. In general, the bulging varicose veins can be safely closed. That's the goal. If you have a vein that's not working, generally these uh, veins do not heal themselves. The, the valves cannot be healed or replaced. And so they're just gonna get worse and worse over time. So superficial veins that are not working, we close them down and that increases the blood flow back up to the heart. Because again, these valves aren't working, blood is heading backwards down towards the feet. So if we close down the bad veins, we're left with only good veins to help bring the blood back up. There are a lot of different ways to close the veins that we do in our office. You can do heat in the form of a laser or radiofrequency ablation. There are injections, 
There are mechanical ways of closing the veins. You can inject glue, sclerosant foam. There are a lot of different ways. And that's, you know, something that the patient should decide with the doctor what's best for that particular vein. I will highlight one method here that we've had a lot of success with at USA Vein Clinics, and that's endovenous laser therapy. That's one of the best and safest and most studied ways of closing down a vein that is insufficient. And it's very easy. This procedure is done in our office and only takes five or 10 minutes. It's a couple needle pinches, no cutting, no scars. There's no downtime at all. The patient hops off the table and can walk around right away. The procedure is done by inserting a needle into this bad vein that we've already mapped out previously. And so we insert the needle into the vein and then the laser is on a wire, on a thread. It's a string basically that goes through the needle up the vein. And then that laser wire delivers heat to the vein. And as we pull the laser through the vein, it heats up the walls of the vein and closes down the vein. Afterwards, you just wear the compression sock for a few days and that vein will close nicely. And that's the whole procedure, a vein ablation to close down a vein that isn't working. It's very, very effective. And that's one of the mainstays of vein treatment. So what can you do about veins? If you have spider veins, varicose veins, or if even if you don't see the veins, but you notice some of these other symptoms, swelling, cramping, burning, itching, these are signs that the circulation in your legs may be slowing. You may have some veins that aren't working. Some of the valves are breaking. And that's when it's the time to get help. Um, your doctor can refer to us. We have a lot of clinics all over the country and we can appropriately um, diagnose and treat your veins. What we do is we bring you into our office and at the first visit, we do a comprehensive vein ultrasound of both legs. This looks at the deeper veins, the more superficial veins. We do the examination lying down, standing up. It's very, very comprehensive ultrasound. Take a look at all the veins, which veins are working, which veins aren't working. Are there any blood clots? Um, how many veins are not working, and then we correlate that ultrasound with the patient's symptoms. So we can say, yes, this vein is a problem, or no, this vein is not a problem. Once we have those veins that we know are causing the issue, that's when we go towards our treatments. We do conservative therapy or procedural therapy, and we work with the patient to get these veins appropriately treated so that the circulation is better, the symptoms go away, the infection risk is lower, and the patient will feel a lot better. So thank you all so much for joining us. It was a real pleasure to bring you this information. 